Okay, in the next um, few minutes we'll discuss um, classification of hypertensive disorders in pregnancy. Hypertension is really a common condition in our labor ward and for this video we'll just discuss um, classification which um, is important for deciding how the patient is going to be managed. Um, the first thing that we need to know is that um, Hypertensive patients occupy a large <clears throat> part of our work. Um, 50 to 80 percent of the patients we are admitting in our um, SOU are hypertensive disorders in pregnancy. Um, around 10 percent of our admissions are hypertensive disorders in pregnancy. That's our referral. So this is quite important. Uh, the first thing that we start with with um, hypertension is just deciding what hypertension is hypertension is blood pressure that is above 140 over 90 um, and this blood pressure has to be repeated um, four to six hours apart meaning that it has to be persistence the patient has to be in a relaxed position and then we repeat that blood pressure and then it gives us two readings that are above 140 systolic and 90 diastolic. So the first category of hypertensive disorders in pregnancy is those women that have what we call gestational hypertension, formerly called pregnancy-induced hypertension. These are patients that have had high blood pressure that starts after their 20 weeks. Um, occasionally this can happen earlier in twin pregnancies, it can happen earlier in um, uh, a molar pregnancy, but this blood pressure has to set in after 20 weeks gestation age and it has to resolve after the puperium. So that is six to eight weeks after delivery, this um, hypertension resolves. So this is really like a transient uh, kind of hypertension. The next category of hypertensive disorders in pregnancy is chronic hypertension. And there are about three ways to make this diagnosis. One, hypertension that starts when a patient is less than 20 weeks is very likely um, going to be classified as chronic hypertension. Second category is patients who have pre-existing hypertension. They've been hypertensive and they became pregnant when their hypertension had already been diagnosed before the pregnancy came in. So those are chronic hypertensives. The third way to make this diagnosis is that woman who comes in hypertensive, she might have come at 20 weeks or just after 20 weeks. And it's difficult to tell, is this gestational? Is this chronic because we didn't have uh, an opportunity uh, to make this diagnosis because maybe the pregnant woman came late uh, to the antenatal clinic because most of our women want to come to the antenatal clinic when the pregnancy is showing. So they come after 20 weeks and we really are not sure what it is. Is it chronic? Is it gestational? Okay. But after um, delivery, uh, this hypertension persists after the piperium. This hypertension is still there. That kind of woman will be classified as um, chronic hypertension. Then we move on to preeclampsia. Uh, preeclampsia is really hypertension in pregnancy. Usually that also sets in after 20 weeks um, of gestation. That's the first condition. And then... Of course, it will resolve uh, quickly after um, the woman delivers. Within the period of the puperium, this woman would uh, have this hypertension resolved. But the key issue with preeclampsia is that it's hypertension that will also be associated with end organ damage. Um, so end organ damage can be manifested by proteinuria. It can be manifested by abnormal kidney function test maybe two to three times the normal abnormal liver function test maybe two to three times the normal um, and um, those 
uh, signs that we normally associate with um, preeclampsia. So we know about that severe headache, um, severe epigastric pain, um, um, severe visual disturbances. So when a patient has all those uh, symptoms um, in association with hypertension in pregnancy, um, then we have to suspect that this um, patient is um, preeclamptic. You realize from this definition that proteinuria is not really a necessary um, prerequisite for you to make a diagnosis of preeclampsia, but when you see it, then it's likely. But any kind of evidence of end organ damage um, can make us make that diagnosis of um, preeclampsia. Then uh, we move on to uh, eclampsia. So eclampsia is really convulsions <clears throat> or coma in a previously preeclamptic patient. Sometimes you discover eclampsia even before you know that the patient was preeclamptic. But the point is that usually the picture you have is that it's a preeclamptic that uh, jumps over that line. They have convulsions or coma. And these convulsions or coma have no other alternative explanation. So you can't find any other pathology that will explain the convulsions and the coma. Then you are going to say that this patient is um, eclamptic. Um, lastly, the last category of hypertensive disorders in pregnancies that we have is, um, and this one is a bit tricky to diagnose, is um, pre-eclampsia superimposed on chronic hypertension. So the way we make this diagnosis is really that you have somebody that you already know is chronic hypertension. That's the first thing. The second thing is you recognizing a change. Uh, that something has really changed in this chronic hypertensive. So their blood pressures were stable, but suddenly, um, you know, they've gone beyond that 20 weeks line. And their hypertension had become suddenly difficult to control or, yeah, you need higher doses of antihypertensives to control that blood pressure. The second way you can make that diagnosis is, again, a lab function. Or is it liver function, kidney function? So a woman who has a normal kidney function, normal liver function, a normal full blood count, you know, normal platelets, uh, and so on. Then after that 20 weeks line, again, they develop um, these abnormal lab uh, results. Then you can make a diagnosis of preeclampsia superimposed on chronic hypertension. Uh, the third way is just symptoms. So this woman has been stable, uh, very well controlled with her chronic hypertension, and then suddenly they have visual disturbances, they have epigastric pain, um, they have um, bad headache. So then you can make a diagnosis of um, preeclampsia superimposed on chronic hypertension, basically because you had had this woman who was at this stable hypertension and then suddenly something has changed so this is how we classify hypertensive disorders in pregnancy and uh, this is really important um, for deciding how these women will be managed because usually um, gestational hypertension is kind of a benign hypertension we usually would monitor it but when we have preeclampsia then it's um it's something can happen and um, that's why this terminology for classifying severe preeclampsia and mild preeclampsia is kind of being discouraged a bit because preeclampsia can be um, called mild but a patient ends up a fitting so people are now wanting to call uh, preeclampsia or classify preeclampsia as preeclampsia with severe features and with preeclampsia with no severe features just to get us away from relaxing when we hear mild preeclampsia and severe preeclampsia uh, but that's um, a subject for another day when we uh, discuss management of hypertensive disorders in pregnancy